Good afternoon. This is Himanshu Asher tuning in for the sixth day out of the 12 days of Christmas. And I look forward to be joined by our master distiller Michael D'Souza and Nadia from Adelaide, Australia. Hello Rahul, how are you? Welcoming her all the way from Adelaide. Hello, how are you? How are you, Nadia? I'm fantastic, thank you. How are you? All good, all good. And can you hear me clearly? I can hear you perfectly clear. Can you hear me? Absolutely. <laughs> Fabulous. Super. <laughs> So, it's summer in your part of the world, if I understand correctly. It is. It was a stinker today. It was 30 degrees plus, okay. I reckon. Very warm. Okay. <laughs> Very warm. All right. Right. In fact, that's what uh, Michael will say. He's tuning in from uh, Goa, and I'm tuning in from Bangalore. So, I I think that would be the temperatures in and around Goa as well, yeah. in winter. Yeah. So, uh, wow. Yeah, just one second. And I'm delighted to introduce you to Michael D'Souza, uh, our master distiller. He'll be tuning in very shortly. And I think you, there you go. You see him on the screen. There he is. Hi, Michael. I want you. Oh. No, I and we've got Nadia from Adelaide. Is that right? That's right. All the way. Perfect. From Adelaide. Yeah. So, as you can see, Michael is uh, the has been an absolutely great master distiller, but been a very good boy with all the Christmas editions lined up behind him. Yeah. <laughs> so, Sadly, I've only so, got one. Yeah. <laughs> I that one. <laughs> so, I, I, when did you hear about uh, the Christmas editions of Paul John? Was it this year well, or previous? Only this year. Um, I've known okay. of Paul John for a little while, but unfortunately haven't had the opportunity to try a lot of stuff from the distillery. I've had about four different um, expressions, the okay. flagship and then a, uh, it was like a pick through a whiskey club here in Australia. Uh, yes. So yeah, when I got the opportunity to try this and do this with you, I jumped on it because why, why not? It's awesome. Why not? Yes. Super. Thank you once again for joining us. And you know, what we are going to do is we'll, we'll, we'll come back to our conversations, but before that, let's uh, pour a dram and uh, let it breathe for a while and so that we can have the best of the conversations and the risky. Oh, you're already oh, ready. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, Michael, you and me mm -hmm. are going to open the bottle and uh, uncork it together and let's see if we can break the internet with the sound of it. So, at the count of three. Nadia, you can join in as well if your bottle is still you got, there. You got to hold on. You got to hold on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. You got to do what you got to do, Master. We'll wait for you. <laughs> okay. I'm ready. All right. So at the count of three, we uncork together. So it's one, two, and three. <laughs> okay. All right. That that was that was a great start and. Well, I'm going to pour a dram and let it sit for a while. Lovely color. Mm. And yeah. So, so you did get the podcast. That's the, that's the recent edition that we did for Australia. Yes. Yes. That is what I got. Okay. No? Okay. And uh, no, no, no. The, no. The, this is the Christmas edition, but you were talking about the whiskey club. Edition, oh, is that what you also got? Yes, okay. that was, that okay. was, sorry, confused. Okay. <laughs> no, no, 
So, oh, yeah. so you did try the flat sips. So you did try yeah. the brilliance and the bold. I did. Yes. Okay. A lot, okay. All of those a lot lighter and a lot more sort of e like not as complex as something like this. I think. Okay. Personally. Okay. But but you started your whiskey journey in twenty nineteen. Sorry, I didn't quite catch that. Hmm? You just cut out, and as you said, I started my journey. I I read that you started your whiskey journey in twenty nineteen. That's correct. Yes. So I've only been drinking whiskey properly for about three years. Okay, okay, and uh, and and uh, and when did you get a first taste of Paul John? Uh, where or was it a tasting or was it somebody it was shared it with you? A sample pack that I had sent okay. to me um, through uh, one of the teams here in Australia, and I would say it would have been a yearish ago. It's hard to say. Okay. Okay. Lose track of time. It just flies okay. by these days. Um, right. But the the whiskey club one I only had quite recently. Got it. Okay. So so yeah, let's uh, let's uh, uh, start with the tasting. And Michael, I, if you would like to lead the way. And before mm -hmm. we do that, uh, I guess is it. Uh, uh, the regular cheers that you say in Australia, or is there an Aussie ver version to it? Uh, I suppose the only Aussie spin you could put on it is cheers, mate. Cheers, mate. Okay. <laughs> so let's do the first one. We'll do it two um, ways. We'll do it the Aussie way, and then when we come back again, maybe second time, we will do it hopefully the new Indian way. Okay. 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 So so cheers, mate, and. Uh, Michael, lead the way in terms of what you're getting, taste, aroma, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah. uh, Nadia and I will chime in. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> okay. Um, this is this is a seven-year-old whiskey. Um, out of 100%, 90% is unpeated. The 10% is peat. So you have three different finishes in this. Unpeated from ex-bourbon. Uh, Unpeated from brandy finish, and also you have peated whiskey finished in Oloroso. <clears throat> so when okay. it comes to brandy and Oloroso, it becomes extremely fruity. Uh, mm -hmm. The ex bourbon gives the whiskey the elegancy. So you on the yeah. nose, if you see, yeah. it is very rich. You have actual Christmas cake. Yeah. You know. <clears throat> yeah. <clears throat> so a lot so. of lot of yeah. Can plum, uh, Christmas cake. Uh, uh, you have a uh, lot of spices. You have dark chocolate, coffee mocha. Yeah. You have. I feel like. Have, yeah. Oh, I started talking as I was drinking. Then <laughs> I feel like you really, as you're drinking it, can get the layers of each of the casks, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. and then all those flavors sort of come forward. Yeah. Each on their own, it's really yeah. well balanced. So on the nose, it is both elegant and rich. And on the palate, it starts with it. It is very sweet and oily. Then the the mm. little bit of the peat gives the whiskey the depth. You know, it makes the whiskey big, and <clears throat> the, the finishing mm -hmm. pretty long. Yeah, very, very long finish, and very very super sweet and. Like Christmas cakey on the nose for sure. Yeah. So, I have a lot of followers that a follow me because they want to learn about whiskey or don't know enough at the moment and want to add to their knowledge bank. But a question that I quite get get asked quite often is, you know, what makes a a Scotch a Scotch or a bourbon, a bourbon, but what makes a Indian whiskey an Indian whiskey? Oh, I mean, uh, it depends. You know, um, you know, I can talk about Paul John. Um, basically, what we have to understand is every whiskey will have its own regional characteristics. Um, 
So Paul John comes from a, a hot climatic conditions, wherein the interaction between the cask and the liquid is quite rapid. So the amount of extraction that we get from this climatic condition is extreme. You know, it's massive. So this makes our whiskey more, you know, bolder, more robust. Um, uh, see, I mean, <clears throat> end of the day, you know, wherever, it, I mean, the, the single malt is made world over, we use three simple ingredients that is malted barley, water, and yeast, yet we end up making different styles. You know, <clears throat> this, this could be for, for way, because of various reasons. You know, it could be um, because of the environment conditions, maybe because, uh, you know, in which the, the entire process is carried out or maybe the design of the pot still itself. <clears throat> yeah. So it's up to the whiskey maker or, uh, you know, how, you know, what kind of whiskey he wants to produce. I suppose so, the beauty of it, sorry to yeah, cut you off, the beauty so of it as well is you've got that sort of freedom in creation too. You haven't got so many sort of rules and regulations in place. Yeah, because, you know, when it comes to Paul John, we don't have age statement. Uh, we produce two kinds of liquid, that is peated and non-peated. Out of these two liquids, we produce different expressions, you know. So <clears throat> we have several expressions. You know, for example, Christmas edition, you know, we have been producing Christmas edition from the past uh, five, six years now. Uh, every edition has at least th three different finishes. You know, yeah. So this makes the 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 liquid or the or the uh, the whiskey extremely complex. Oh, definitely. So, you for example, if you're talking about age statement, for ex I'm giving an example. You know, Glenfiddich twelve. You know, it cannot. It is. It has got that age uh, behind it. It's a twelve year old whiskey, but it cannot. It cannot. The only the age cannot make whiskey complex. You, yeah. oh, you, need sure. more, you need more elements to go in. For sure. Definitely. Um, and you can taste the complexity in this. It's very Absolutely. delicious. Yeah. Um, so this is the fifth uh, Christmas cask that you have mm -hmm. brought out. How mm -hmm. do you feel about the evolution of the Christmas casks that you've brought out? Do you think that this is the best one that you've done so far? Or do you feel like there's something more that you could try next time or something you've done in the past that you've enjoyed a lot? Uh, again, you know, as I said, uh, we started, the tradition started in 2018. Um, you know, uh, for the very first expression, uh, Christmas edition in 2018, uh, I had used, you know, unpeated from ex-bourbon, peated from ex-bourbon and unpeated from Oloroso cask. Okay. So th this was 2018. 2019, instead of Oloroso, I used Pedro Jimenez. So <clears throat> every expression is different, you know. Um, every expression is different. So uh, I'm a big fan of non Peter and ex bourbon fan, but, you know, uh, in general, most of the people like, fit, you know, cast finishes. Yeah. They love their Oloroso and uh, Pedro Jimenez. So, I'll put uh, you in a tough you know, decision to try and kick one. <laughs> Nadia, it's like asking uh, which is your favorite child. I know, it is. I'm sorry to put you in that <laughs> so, position. Um, <laughs> you got you to make something for everyone too. That's it. It sounds like you have a lot of fun with the creativity behind it. And, yeah, you know, I mean... End of the day, end of the day, what is important is the right balance. You know, <clears throat> you should have uh, so, the right balance of uh, all the flavors. You know, you, it cannot happen that the Oloroso is overpowering the brandy flavors or the ex uh fruitiness, you know. <clears throat> so uh, it has, you should have everything. Yeah. Delicious. So, Matia, the thing about, like you mentioned in the conversation, and I just thought I'll bring that into perspective. So we do have uh, laws on making uh, single malt in India. Okay. Uh, 
what we follow is more of the laws that have been set by the scotch whiskey association and the, okay. that is maturing the uh, the the new make in an oak barrel or the distillate in an oak barrel for 3 years now mind you this is three tropical years uh, of goa uh, while the law actually is been three years of scotland so okay. it's it's very much uh, if you compare it uh, and i was just talking to you before michael chimed in uh, was that uh, michael what's the temperature in goa right now ah um the, today it is i think 31 degrees celsius <laughs> yeah <laughs> and, so and have, you are in uh, your summer, in summer and this is goa in winter. winter well okay hey. yeah okay not to self it's on my bucket list to come over i'm a big indian food uh culture just i'm obsessed i cook indian eat indian like every week I literally had it tonight um and it's on my bucket list to come over there but note to self don't come in summer <laughs> <laughs> well i thought uh, i thought you would be used to the roaring 40s of of the outback but yeah uh, and adelaide is not very far away from the outback is it it's 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 a fair few hours drive um okay, okay. But, yeah it, and you get very climatized to air conditioning so mm -hmm. you're probably not out in the sun as much okay. as the next person but i suppose i could get used to the heat <laughs> well uh, the thing is yeah so so as michael always says that in goa you get only uh, two seasons hot and hotter so right now three the three hot hotter than monsoon hottest hottest okay <laughs> <laughs> so 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 that's what does to the maturation it's actually uh what we start with the with the nirvana uh which is 3 years plus and it's actually like the uh, 12 years of maturation so one year of maturation in a cold climate like sweden scotland japan would be 12 years or uh, three or uh, four years of maturation in a hot tropical climate let's say like taiwan india uh you know kentucky Yeah. Uh, so on and so forth. So, so you know, um, it's it's not only that it is rapid maturation, but it is also uh, it is maturing uh, differently. So it's very similar to coffee, like cold brew and hot brew. Uh, from the same coffee, it would taste differently as compared to you know a hot brew. the uh, and a cold brew so yeah. so it's very similar to that yeah oh. so way of putting it i've not had it broken down to the hot and cold brew before i like that one <laughs> yeah it's the same coffee but you can brew it in a in a cold uh in a cold brew way and you get more aromatics more this thing whereas in a hot brew you get the full of everything of the whole bean so yeah. so yeah that's that's what it is and and as uh michael mentioned that this is uh, about 6 years plus uh 7 years uh total whiskey uh we are talking about nearly 25 to 28 years of aging in a colder climate yeah for sure yeah so just about something like that but that's just playing with the number but i think taste wise color wise this has got mm. you know no additional color added it's uh it's non chill filtered at 46% uh no colorings and it's natural color and and that's why it's a no age statement because if we were to do something say about 25 to 28 years old it would be only this much of a release for the whole of christmas edition yeah <laughs> I'm back, and I'm going to. Sorry, there was a there was a bit of a connection issue, and I think I'm back, and I'm going to chime in, 
and wait for Nadia to join and uh, also our master Distilla. So bear with me and yes, view. Okay, there you are. Hi, okay. we're back. <laughs> Little Sorry, problem. that seemed to be yes. That that seemed to be a bit of a problem. I'll I'll let you stabilize a bit because uh, I still feel there is a uh, a connection issue. So, can you hear me clearly? I can hear you fine. fine. Yep. Okay. All good. All right. So let's get on to getting Michael in. Right, just one second. Yes, Tony, gotta love whiskey. Hi, Michael. Hi, Manchu. Where did you go? I don't know. Something happened and the connection went away. Uh, looks like it wasn't behaving and now Nadia has gone off. Just I'm trying to sign her in just bear with me when she comes back and uh, i don't know where i left you did you was i kind of frozen or was it, what was it no no all of a sudden you went off oh okay all of a sudden i went off because yeah. okay sorry about that because you had you and nadia had frozen for quite some time on my oh. screen okay but oh, she's yeah back. Uh, oh, we're there she's back. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. Across across cities and across continents. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You Sorry. So you froze on my screen. Now I don't know where I got off the universe. I don't even remember mm. either. Okay. Um, okay. We were, I was going to ask another question because being the Christmas yes, sure. edition. Um, I recently went to an event and it was like a magazine launch for a food and drinks thing in Adelaide. And the lady who runs the magazine, she was part Indian and has like a mixed Christmas. And she was explaining what her Christmas looked like. And it sounded like an absolute dream. You know, you've got a bit of Indian food and then you've got your Australian pavlova and cold meats or hot roasts on the table. Um, right. Obviously, Christmas is around the corner, and I'm looking forward to sharing this one at Christmas time. But what have you guys got planned for your Christmas, or what would you expect to see at an Indian Christmas? Michael, uh, go ahead. Because Michael is. Uh, so, okay, just to give you a background, uh, in India we do have a Christian community. Um, our chairman, Mr. Paul P. John, and Michael are Christians, so I'll let them lead the way on how they celebrate Christmas uh, at home. <laughs> wow, I mean, India as a whole, I mean, I don't know. Oh, no. Oh, dear. You're back? You're back. Okay. Hmm. Okay, um, I don't know whether Nadia, you, you, have, have you been to India ever? No, I'd love to go though. Okay. That's why I'm, I mean, if you, I'm gonna live vicariously through your story. Yeah, <laughs> India is, you know, we have, we have 28 different regions and it's like 28 countries within a country. So, okay. so every region is different. You know, in every region you have small, uh, the population of Christians living, and the way in which they celebrate Christmas is different, you know. So I'm I'm in Goa. Goa used to be uh, a Portuguese colony, and we have, I think, in India, Goa has the maximum amount of Christians living here in the state. So Christmas is one of the biggest festival in Goa. Okay. So um, you know. Like any other country here, we celebrate our Christmas by um, going to the church in the evening, uh, Christmas Eve. Um, 
for the midnight mass then the next day the actual celebration start you know with a lot of alcohol um and a lot of christmas delicacies <clears throat> yeah i mean um, it's like any other european nations because you have the uh, the portuguese influence here yeah and food what do you look forward food. to at christmas um, time okay again you know depends um uh, again you you have a lot of people uh, uh cooking the local uh, goan uh, cuisine um you know when i say goan it's a mix of african and portuguese you know some of the some of the cuisine has come all the way from um, angola mozambique uh, portugal <laughs> and and different parts of uh, africa and europe Mm. and also we have the the very own indian uh, the cuisine made so not many people cook uh, or roast turkey or you know chicken here um yeah i mean that's it well, but a lot of meat yes mm. sounds delicious <laughs> <laughs> sounds like i want to be there yeah <clears throat> sure Michael, can you hear us? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. No, the bandwidth again. Um, I can I can hear you, Manchu. Okay, so it's now you're going on. A... I can just hear the pair of you. Our connection's not so great again. I don't know what's going on. Yes, yes, yes. We lost you. Whatever you said was fabulous. I uh, look fabulous but we couldn't hear you. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Yeah. Um, this is this is during what seemed like the covid times and you had a zoom meeting and you know suddenly this thing would happen it's happening again. Yeah. yeah. Yes. There's nothing worse than a bad internet connection. An internet connection. Yeah. <clears throat> <clears throat> I really get a lot of um that brandy and like sultanas and pudding with this one. Um so since you are I mean you know you must have tasted a lot of Tasmanian whiskey right <clears throat> so nowadays I've, I <clears throat> I was I was in Australia recently and I got a chance to uh, taste a lot of Tasmanian whiskeys mm. so do you think uh this particular expression is something close to some of the tasmanian whiskies definitely i think it is you know very close to i've had other tasmanian um christmas expressions as well and you know it's very in line with sort of what i've tasted before so it's nothing yeah hmm i would say so mm -hmm. and i had a question for you nadia uh, do you get um any special christmas editions from overseas or from local distilleries like tasmania specific like you know specific blends not just christmas packaging but specific yeah. releases for christmas oh okay okay yeah yeah there's a couple out there um like i said i've had one or two from Tasmania that were special christmas releases um and again delicious that i love the mix of all of those real christmasy flavors there really delicious lovely lovely so yeah i thought <clears throat> so so what would you pair this with we lost you on that but i will revisit as long as the connection is seems to be good right now well i think this would go well with custard of some mm -hmm. sort i reckon mm -hmm. some sort of like pudding or fruit cake i think it would marry right. it's quite similar um i'm personally not someone who eats with my whiskey i tend to not be very good at pairing things together i just love getting into either my food or my whiskey um but it's definitely something i need to start learning how to do um But yeah, I would say probably like a custard and pudding type situation with this one. Okay. Okay. All right. So, I mean, 
goes well in the sweetness index mm. of the whiskey. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Yeah, my favorite would be something which are not very sweet desserts like a cheesecake uh, or a savory dessert uh, which has a little bit of um, phyllo pastry around it so that it adds it, it bumps up the umami of the whiskey for me but yeah that's what that would be my go to mm -hmm. yeah you sound like you've got a lot more experience of pairing food with whiskey than i do <laughs> <laughs> yeah i yeah i guess the, yeah it actually started with wines but now i do a lot of pairings with whiskey yeah yeah that's a skill i'm yet to acquire but i'm I'm all ears to learn. No, it's it's absolute delight to 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 have you as a, and get your perspectives of what you think about our whiskies of the Paul John range and what you what you have experienced this with our Christmas edition and hopefully you will uh, have a collection as of Christmas editions and our other uh, expressions as we go along and and we look and we look forward to welcoming you michael is always there at the distillery in fact today is a holiday but he is tuned into the distillery uh as we and he also at the at the distillery I don't know whether it's me, Manchu, or Nadia. I don't know. Yes. No, Michael. You back? We want you. I'm here. I can hear you, and I can hear Nadia as well. It's just that sometimes we go on buffering, but that's all right in terms of visual. Uh, but I can hear you very clearly. <clears throat> yeah, I think the Himanch the the network is bad from your end. I actually. Uh, I'm. A, I'll always take the blame. Absolutely, no problem. Yes. <laughs> Um, no, so Michael, is the yes. brewery um, very hot or extra hot? If it's already very hot in Goa, how hot no, is it? Not there? really. Uh, uh, we don't have a temperature variation throughout the year. You know, the average temperature is you can say around twenty-seven degrees. You know, uh, during the summer it will be very humid. Uh, for some people, mm -hmm. it is too much. Um, otherwise. You know, it's a, it's a it's an amazing weather. It's um, yeah. it's a mix of you know you can say a uh, uh, Brazil and Hawaii weather. Yeah, and you've got the beach, so yeah, yeah, mm, we do. <laughs> so this yes. is this is the right right this is the right time to come to Goa. The weather weather is very pleasant. It is not humid, so you would you would really enjoy. All right, All right. noted. I will come for Christmas next year. And I will have a Christmas feast with you yeah. with the next Christmas edition. Christmas edition. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, and and if you are into music, there are a lot of music festivals um, that happens in Goa as well, um, all through December to January. The weather is uh, is beautiful. I would say, Michael, till uh, February and March or February. February, yeah. Great. All February, right. yeah. So November, December, January, February. That's that's the window of uh, light sun or happy sun. All right, that's good to yeah. know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so, yeah. So, uh, Nadia, thank you so much for joining us. And before we sign off, uh, we do one more. Uh, dram uh, cheers in an Indian way. We never had a proper Indian way to do, but we are trying to create something at okay. Paul John, and uh, we will take we will conclude this with a Jai Ho. So at the 
as a, as a community of chain, we will all stay together and let the universe here join you. Okay. Okay. Are we ready? Okay. So, at one, two, and three, Jai Ho. Jai Ho. <laughs> if um, anyone is watching in Australia, this Christmas cast is still on the way out, but you can get a bottle at Barrel and Batch. Um, but they're still all sort of making their way out at the moment. But there's a couple of bottles there if you if you click. So that's me. All done. Super. Thank you. Guys. Um, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me and hopefully I'll see you in Goa for Christmas. Yes. Look forward to hosting you in Yeah. Looks like a plan. Thanks, Nadia. I wish you a very happy Christmas in advance. <clears throat> and you too. And thank you. And from all of us at Paul John Single Malls, a Merry Christmas and a great 2023. You too. Thank you. See you, see you soon. Bye. Cheers, Machu.